Hello everyone, Leslie Cornwell here with Midwifery Business Consultation. This presentation is about coping strategies for labor. I wanted to create this for midwives, birth assistants, midwife apprentices, anyone that's newer part of the labor experience um, it's really important to understand the different stages of labor the latent stage of labor early labor um, has different comfort coping strategies as active labor transition and um, delivery so it's really important for midwives people involved in natural birth to have these tools in their tool chest to be able to utilize and each person is different so these are just examples um, that you can use and help a family um, deliver their baby. So labor is hard work. It may be the hardest woman the experience a woman ever has. So for me personally, having three home births, I can definitely vouch for this. It was the most rewarding, hardest thing I'd ever done. Um, however, it has a purpose and a result. I always stress it's not like breaking your arm. It's not like there is a problem. Your body is doing what it's supposed to, and it's a switch. As soon as the baby comes out, you're on this euphoric high. And the reason you're having the surges, the contractions, the, the sensations in your body is a lot of changes are happening in a short amount of time. Um, every labor is different. Every woman is different. Every culture is different. I have never been to do two births that have looked the same. So that's what's amazing and about being a midwife is you get to use so many of your skills because you never know. Is it going to be a day birth, a night birth? Is it going to be fast? Is it going to be a long labor? Um, there's so many things to influence how the birth goes. Um, so some of the great tools are breathing techniques, relaxation. A lot of the childbirth classes, um, particularly hypnobirthing, teach you visualization, teaching, teach you breathing techniques, ways to help relax the body and increase your own natural hormones um, called endorphins for the the pain response occurring um some women get more relief with other parts giving certain coping suggestions may work great in early labor but once you get in transition a good hard active labor it's a lot harder to focus and and find its coping strategies that'll help the woman like they used to in the early active labor um, pain medication and anesthesias are available in the ha hospital setting and most of the uh, midwives, apprentices, birth assistants that I will be teaching do out of hospital setting where those forms of pain medication do not exist. Supporting a woman in labor, that is by far the most important thing someone can do. So doulas are amazing at that, um, nurses in the hospital, midwives, um, support team, birth assistant, the apprentice, the partner, um, the, the family, sisters, aunts, moms. Some women like a more private birth experience and some women like a party and like lots of people involved. So I really stress birthing alone is the not the most ideal thing in the world because you're really vulnerable it increases the anxiety the stress um holding a hand being in the room and being present is really important to support a woman in labor and it's it's a coping strategy um so having that person whether they're hired or they're um, direct family friends is really really important it decreases complications it shortens the labor it makes less pain perception um, because they're not feeling like they're doing it alone even though their body is doing this they've got a team to support them through it giving them drinks of water putting a washcloth on their back rubbing um, their shoulders doing effluage there's a lot of different things just even um, focusing with vocalization, eye contact, breathing with somebody, it really helps to take away from the internal fixation of what you're feeling to your environment. So labor partners can be emotional and physical support. It could be gentle, it could be firm touch, it could be words. There's many variations of what labor support looks like. Um, and each person, I've been to births where it's quiet as can be. She's in the corner doing her thing and just wants to know we're there just in case. I've been at births where she needs to have six people around her at all times and there has to be music and there has to be things happening in the room to help her with coping with labor. So she's not the focus of the experience. 
So a doula is a hired birth assistant. Um, they typically do not have a medical background, so they're not going to give medical advice. They're not going to um, be able to help with emergency situations. They're strictly hired to support the woman during labor. Their skills are invaluable um, during the stages of labor, especially a long labor. Um, having somebody you've paid that really is focused on supporting you, especially in the hospital setting, I stress to people, the nurse can fill that role, but if she has a couple people or there's a lot going on in the unit, the, the nurse can't necessarily be constant labor support. So having a doula is a really great resource um, in the hospital setting. So the biggest thing, especially even if you have some people will say, well, I don't need a doula because I have my partner, um, I have family. The doula is an expert in labor support. They've helped lots and lots of women versus maybe this is your first baby and your partner has never seen birth before. They're not going to do nearly a good a job to support you, rub your back, say the right things at the right time. Um, just because they've never done it before, this is uh, their expertise. So they know what helps and from how you're acting and what you're doing, suggestions to try. Um, the fee varies drastically depending on the services and most insurances do not cover, but there's a couple states where you can get a doula paid for by your insurance company. So some of the relaxation tips that are available, um, everything focuses on relaxing the body, relaxing the body. Um, the more you can relax the body, the more the hips open, the muscles relax, your contractions get more efficient. Um, you're allowing, you're not fighting what your body is trying to do to bring your baby to the world. So relaxation is the release of tension from your mind and that body of conscious effort of you trying to fight or trying to resist the changes happening. Um, by reducing that muscle tension, your body just works, it just does what it's supposed to. Many of the benefits, especially a longer labor, it conserves energy, it relaxes, reduces the stress, reduces the pain. Um, so deep breathing techniques, water therapy, um, meditation, visualizations, all these things are relaxation techniques. They take practice. Some people say, well, I'm just going to wing it when birth happens. And I really stress that would be like saying, I'm going to do a marathon in a couple months and just see how I do. If you do not prep and prepare yourself for your birth experience, it's going to be a lot harder than someone who has visualized the stages of labor, someone who has practiced birthing positions, practice doing things your body has never done before, really helps out your labor experience. And each one is different. Like you'll find that hypnobirthing style works for one person, music works for another person, um, having silence, having some people love water births, some people don't. So you have to learn what coping strategies make sense for you um, and practice those ones. So that's why childbirth classes are great because they really give a balance of all those different types to use. Tips for mastering relaxation. Pick a quiet place, soft to music. Um, make sure it's nice and comfortable, warm temperature. You don't want a too cool of a room. Otherwise, you'll get goosebumps and you'll get tense just naturally. Um, choosing a comfortable position, especially one that's more of a position you'd use in labor. So hands and knees, squatting. Um, you can sit Indian style. That's an option more in earlier labor. It's harder in more active labor. Um, but just try different positions, things you'd be more likely to do while in labor and practice slow, deep belly breathing. Focus on the breathing. Um, maybe repeat a video that talks about positive affirmations so your body will get trained when this video and this music comes on. Now I'm, I know it's kind of like Pavlov's Law. If you uh, smell food, you're going to start salivating because over time that repetition, you start listening to the music, you're going to anticipate being more relaxed just because that's your conditioning. So focus on different areas of your body. Everybody is different. Um, like for myself, I would always get a lot more tension in my upper back, my neck, a lot of headaches. So I knew during labor, it wasn't as much my lower back I would need rubbed. It's more of my neck and helping where I hold my tension. And that's just learning your body. The more you practice anything, the better you get. Um, I always give that example with meditation. It was really hard in the beginning to do meditation. And the more I did it, the easier it got. 
Progressive relaxation is beginning in your head and working all the way down to your feet. It's focusing on each individual muscle group within your body, um, especially having a um, an audio of some kind to listen to to help you um, to focus on, okay, your head, your forehead, your cheeks, your jaw, your neck, your shoulders, um, and just keep going down and your whole body will just naturally relax as you're focusing on each muscle. Um, and you could even practice tensing up an area and then relaxing it to show that your conscious has um, the ability to tense those areas and relax those areas on your own, especially the jaw. The more tense your jaw is, I always stress, and Ina May can reiterate this, that the more tense your jaw is, the more tense your cervix and your pelvic region gets. So. We always talk during labor of low, deep vocalizations because it gets your jaw to open and relax and that will naturally open and relax your pelvis. Touch relaxation is a great method during labor. Um, most women are very um, sensitive to everything happening in your body and if we can give a light um, effleurage caress of a specific area, especially like the temple, the forehead, the hand, um, it'll give another area for the mother to focus on and distract her partly from what her body is doing. Um, so similar to pre uh, progressive relaxation, it's focusing on a muscle group, doing, you can do small circles, you can do ovals, you can just do up and down, there's no rules. Um, you can apply a little bit of pressure and then relax it. I, I tend to not want to make things more complicated. I just tell, especially if there's a partner that knows her really well, they're going to have their own routine of how to help relax parts of her body. Tips for practicing that touch relaxation. It's the same concept, private, quiet room. Um, you can have music on, make sure it's warm, comfortable. Um, if you're planning on delivering at home and you plan on delivering in the living room, you plan on delivering in your bedroom, I tend to tell people to do practicing relaxation in your birth environment because you want to feel comfortable and conditioned so that what you're visualizing is what has so if you're planning on delivering in your bedroom, your mind is now visualizing that space when you're practicing. Um, these are very specific areas of the body you can focus on. The temples in general, if somebody has a headache, um, we instinctually will rub our temples. The base of the skull, so more that neck area. Shoulders get a lot of that tension. Your back, um, especially the lower back near your sacrum, gets a lot of that tension when the pelvis is opening up. Other areas, the arms can be used, but I think the hands are more generalized, um, just like a caress motion, um, especially if there's a water birth and her arms are kind of floating out of the tub. You don't have as much of the body to work with for light touch, so I see it more with the hands and that lower arm. The legs can be an option. Some women like their legs rubbed and some people aren't um, feet people. So you just got to ask and find out. Uh, but there are specific pressure points on the hand and the feet you can use to help get labor going and to help with the um, birth process. So these are examples of rotations that you can do for birth massage. Um, and every woman is different in different parts of the labor. She's going to tell you it's too light, it's too touch, and just don't take offense and um, try it a different way. And each contraction will be different. Some are more intense than others. As the baby's rotating, there's going to be different nerves pressed on. So you just, you learn um, what areas to focus on depending on the stages of labor and just the simple responses you're getting from the laboring woman. So breathing techniques, many of the exercises, there's the he he who, he he who, and there's some where it's just the silliest thing. I've seen women instinctually make up the silliest ways to breathe. And as long as she's getting good transition of oxygen and exhaling of carbon dioxide and able to relax between the contractions, I don't care what breathing pattern a woman uses. The goal is to make sure the woman is getting good cleansing breaths, not hyperventilating, um, not starting to get lightheaded and, di and dizzy from all that extra carbon dioxide in her body, which can stress out the baby and make her more tired and the labor longer. So our goal is always good oxygenation for the mother and the baby with slow cleansing breaths after the contraction's over, take advantage of those relaxation periods in between contractions. It helps to get 
more centralized grounding and focusing on the breathing than what is being felt at that point. So breathing techniques can be done on their own, but I found breathing techniques better if there is a support person directly in front of the woman doing that same pattern with her. So then she can look at that person, she can hold that person's hand, they can get in a rhythm together. Um, so there's cleansing breaths, like you had heard me talk about, a slow cleansing breath, inhale through your nose, imagine cool, pure air, and then slowly blow it out through your mouth. And that's great to use at the end of a contraction, um, especially if she it was a more intense one, you're in transition, you're pushing, I would say a deep cleansing breath frequently. Slow paced breathing, I tend to see that more um, when women are more instinctually, it reminds me of like the patting dog when they're in labor themselves as other mammals do, they can get more instinctual. And they can you can say things if you want, you can go, one and two and three and breathe and that kind of pattern. But typically that's, I would say that's more self-directed by the mother she's doing. Um, modified pace breathing, pattern pace breathing. These are all different names for ways to do a breathing technique. Um, so like we talked about, ha ha hoo, he he hoo. There are all kinds of words that can be used. The biggest thing I'm stressing is I don't care what breathing pattern a mom makes, no matter how silly or birthing position, as long as baby is getting good oxygen, the mom's able to relax and she is, she's finding ways to cope on her own. Breathing, breathing patterns don't matter. To Massage and touch is a great way to um, reduce the pain sensations, especially on that lower sacrum, um, the back, that counter pressure as the hips are changing um, the dimensions as the baby is coming down. Some women like light, light touch, some women like on their belly and their hands, some women like deeper touch. Um, massage will improve the blood flow, it'll re release the endorphins, and it's just, it's so the woman's not feeling alone. She's having somebody with her. She's having, especially a warm room with a good support team, you will really get a good release of the endorphins. Um, so we don't want the fight and flight response. We don't want her to stress out and get overwhelmed and want to run away from the situation. Um, sometimes that naturally happens during transition. I hear that a lot when she's pushing and very close to having the baby come out that the moms will naturally say, I'm done. I'm ready. I'm ready to be done. Let's let's go get the baby out, pull the baby out. And I know she's very close to delivering her baby at that point because she's just hit this wall of exhaustion. So the more we can slow down the breathing, the more we can slow down her heart rate, the more we can relax the muscles, the better her body will naturally create that morphine-like chemical to make the baby come out. It'll be a shorter labor. It'll be a less perceived labor. It'll be an overall better experience. So back labor is a pretty hard labor um, for women. It, it's, I had a back labor with my first and my other two were much easier labors. So it's, it, you just don't feel like you get a break. You get this intense pain localized in your back and then it just gets worse with the contraction. Um, Burst is a traditional labor like with my second and third. I didn't have, I just had that slight pressure in my pelvis in between the contractions. And then I had my wave and then worked through it. So back labor is definitely a harder labor. It needs more labor support. Um, a lot of people are rotating on the birth team to give that hard, constant counter pressure on the lower back. You tend to be using more of the heel of your hand versus the fingers like in the picture. Um, and some women will tell you, I want the pressure all the time. I want it pressed harder during a contraction. Um, those women tend to have harder positions finding to get comfortable. Um, hands and knees is a great one. Tubs are sometimes hard with the back labor because you can't sit in semi-fowlers. Um, being in hands and knees in the water sometimes is a little too cool because half the body is out of the water, depending on the tub you have and the warmth of the room. Um, so yeah, so the biggest thing with back labor is the counter pressure on that lower sacrum really helps out women. Um, focal points concentration, that is really used a lot in hypnobirthing. I loved it, did it with my second child. In the power of the mind, like we do not, I stress to women over and over again, we have no idea how powerful our minds are 
to change our thought process, to block our pain perception, to give us the best experience or the worst experience of anything, not just birthing our babies. So I really, really stress that how powerful concentration, practicing focal points. So getting some pictures, um, whether it's your other kids, it's a beach, like I joked all the time, I had um, waves I pictured because of the contractions and I'd be sitting on the sand in the beach and have my margarita in my hand. So, um, Everybody is different what they think about and just giving ideas and suggestions and then she can personalize what her focal points will be whether they're in her mind or they're an actual picture that her partner will rotate that the, she looks at. Um, I like things that are more external, meaning that they're in the surrounding area because we can have the woman keep her eyes open. When a woman closes her eyes, she tends to get more internal and have a harder time separating between um, the contractions and her images, but sometimes it's not an issue. Hypnobirthing is a lot more internal self, and that's all about that practice. The more you practice it, the easier it's going to be. Music is a great option. Women use music. You can have more upbeat music. You can have classical music. Everybody's style and personality is going to be different what kind of music she wants during labor and during the different stages of labor. Maybe earlier labor, it's more of the upbeat. And for, I laughed. I'd been at a couple bursts during transition and delivering. It was more heavy metal and like it was pretty intense to me, but it was calming to her. To her. So everybody is different. And just Practice listening to what you want to. Hypnobirthing has great audiobooks to reference, to listen to about bringing your baby to the world and some nice calming music. I loved doing just rainforest and the sounds of waves in the backdrop because it really helped with the visualization process. So this picture is a classic picture from um, the hypnobirthing, the crowning lotus. So visualizing your baby coming out and that your vaginal opening is more of the flower of a petal and opening up for your baby. So having more gentle imagery of the birth process will really help to relax and open for the baby. Um, there's different styles of visualization. Some people will directly visualize their baby coming down and out. Some people will visualize um, flowers and colors and senses and smells. So you just have to figure out what is best for you and your support. Warm water. Um, some women will deliver in the water. Some women will just use it for labor. And I really stress having deep tubs like the inflatable tub in the picture versus the standard hospital tub or even a standard home tub. That only 16 inches of water does not give the full benefit of taking away gravity and that extra pressure on the pelvis and um, the contractions during labor. So many people will say to me, oh, I tried labor during my last baby and it just didn't help me. And the first question I always asked was what kind of tub you used because it was a big difference of the depth. So a standard birth center tub, a standard inflatable tub will fill water more for 22 to 24 inches. So that extra eight to 10 inches of water is a huge difference in squatting and hands and knees and being really submerged up to almost your chest for women um, during labor and it makes a big difference. So I used water therapy for all of my deliveries. The first one I did not deliver in water, but the last two I did. And I can vouch a hundred percent, even when I, with my home birth practice, I had done mostly water births because it was just so much more comfortable. It decreases the chances of tears. It helps to really relax the woman and get her own natural endorphins going. Um, another way to, if it's a first time mom and she's not sure if she'd like the water or not, I always ask when you're not feeling good, you have a stressed out day, do you tend to take a bath or not? If a woman tends to take a bath, she tends to gravitate towards the comfort of water to soothe her. So those are the women I tend to see have a better birth experience with using water than the women that don't typically take baths when they're having a rough day. These are different positions for um, birthing, laboring that you can suggest and try. As you can see, there's no hospital bed where you're laying on your back pushing. Um, these are more upright, open, constantly changing positions because the pelvis has to constantly change. The baby does, does a corkscrew um, turn during labor called the cardinal movements of labor. So the baby is constantly changing angles, twisting in the mom's pelvis, and so she has to change the angle of her body to to help bring the baby out. So these are all great um, positions to use and you see how there's a support person helping her through most of those. Um, so just stressing 
I, I never would try to give a lot of suggestions of position unless we're sitting at the same cervical dilation for a while. If the baby's posterior, if she's having a hard time pushing, um, then I'll try to give more suggestions. But I found with labor, the quieter I am and not trying to tell her body how to instinctually do things, she'll listen to her body more. Um, so it's very powerful. If she tries to go in a position that feels better, it's probably a better position to rotate the baby. So these are different pressure points. Um, a lot of people will look them up for getting labor going, but they help just as much for back labor. They help as much for the pain relief during labor. Um, some people they work on, some people they don't. Um, so just applying pressure to those areas. This one I'm a little more hesitant to tell people to practice until they're about 38 weeks because sometimes it can tip the scale to get labor going. Um, you can add on top of pressure. You can use cold and heat depending on the woman's preferences. So a birthing ball is a great tool to have at your birth center or to have at a home birth. It's just a large exercise ball, but it really works great to, um, the chairs are hard, firm surfaces. So a birthing ball you can bounce on, you can get in a rhythm. Um, it takes away the pressure of the pelvis instead of sitting on that firm surface. Um, it's a great tool to do lots of different labor positions in, um, and you can get into a circular rhythm, which is perfect for the pelvis when you're rocking um, and hands the knees on a birth ball. I really like them. So this is kind of just to summarize all the things we had talked about. All of these things were you don't need any fancy tools. You just need an inflatable tub and a liner. You just need uh, uh, your hands, uh, patience, uh, exercise ball. But most of these things it's just it's a skill. It's an art and being able to support women. The words to say, the words not to say. Um, are really just, it takes time to learn that and being around the birth environment. The biggest things I like to stress about keeping relaxed is our duty as birth workers, midwives, midwife apprentices, birth assistants, um, doulas, nurses in the hospital, is to provide a safe, supportive, calm environment for the woman and her birth team. So being respectful, um, she is in charge and giving her guidance and support. Midwives are like lifeguards at the pool. They are not in charge, but they're there just in case you need them. And um, our equipment and skills and suggestions are very valuable when it's warranted versus birth does so much better when it's a natural, and it's a natural instinctual process that we're supporting the woman through. So trying to avoid bright lights, loud noises, a lot of fast, frantic moving throughout the room can really stress out a laboring mother. And this is more common in the hospital setting. Um, there's just so many people coming and going from the room. There's a bigger, um, there's many patients to worry about. So they're trying to manage all those things versus in an out of hospital setting, we have the luxury to be more personalized, to not have a rush fast pace because we have this woman to focus on. We don't have an entire unit to focus on. So during pregnancy, the midwife also has the advantage compared to just the birth worker. So the birth assistant, the doula, the nurse at the hospital to get a good relationship with that woman and learn what helps her, um, what stresses her out, what's her personality like. Is she more of a joker? Is she more serious? Is she more quiet, insecure, shy, because those personalities and those subconscious hints the woman discusses. Um, if she's a person that loves control and this is her first baby, letting go is going to be a lot harder for her. And so those things can be talked about and prepping during the pregnancy to help with the labor. Um, and it's just, it's learning the tools. It's encouraging childbirth classes. It's encouraging watching videos, natural, normal birth experiences, surrounding the woman with good, normal support groups, family, friends, in a normal birth environment will really make a huge difference on how relaxed she will be and how empowering her birth experience will become. Thank you very much for watching this video.